welcome to this video and on this stormy night I'd like you to introduce you to the Jervan bag this is a piece of equipment that's previously only really been known well in military and bushcrafting circles it's a fantastic piece of kit that I feel that hikers and backpackers shouldn't be without and certainly this is something now that I'm always going to be using and it's never going to be leaving my backpack no matter which time of year. Now the Durban bag comes in this bag, this is what's called the Fell Duken original which means mounting cover in Norwegian and this is in the mounting camo cover and this is the bag itself and it measures 143 by 143 if you open it out that's what 286 and it's a PU coated silky nylon that's alu lined looks like mylar stuff so what I'm going to do and open it up to make an insulated floor for the tent now that's laid out inside out that's a nice reflective layer and it's just one use of this German bag and in this video I'm gonna mostly explain why I think this is a really useful bit of kit we can borrow from the military now there's two things that we've got really got in common with the military and that is we are outside for a prolonged period of time sometimes in really harsh weather and we need thermal protection and sometimes we choose not to be seen this particular piece of equipment covers both of those bases in multiple roles now traditionally I've been carrying this blizzard ja jacket active it weighs 250 grams and you can actually wear it as a jacket not going to be as thermally efficient as the German bag but that's been a great thing but the problem is is that this is not versatile in use so in other words it's sealed away and it's strictly for emergencies I don't want to get it out for kind of casual use or just to keep warm and of course the thing I've been using many times is the Bothy bag I've got three of these two man a four man and a rab eight to ten uh, there's other videos where I've shown these in use and these are a great lightweight shelter but they're not waterproof they're pretty flappy and uh, not discreet if you should want to maintain a low profile still has really great great use for its warmth to weight ratio but this is proving to be a far more versatile product and when you stop, if your dog gets cold, this is the one for the dog. Good girl. But I'm training her to get used to this. So that's got an insulated pad at the bottom. And uh, of course, I can zip her entirely into that. Wait. Wait. Because it's got a toggle around the neck there. That's absolutely fantastic for her there. waterproofed in a separate bag insulation kept in a dry bag inside this is a synthetic one by Fern pop that over your soft shell or mid layer put that away to stop it wetting up And now I've got a warm, dry, insulated coverall layer and instantly I can feel an improved heat in there. In terms of keeping warm, it's not a particularly cold 8.5 degrees out here, but once I get bundled up in here, you'll see what the temperature is. And I've got a secret weapon 
the Whitby warmer. For those that don't know, the Whitby warmer is a clever little device that works on lighter fluid. You simply fill this reservoir, fill the tank up there, and then you light the catalytic converter using the lighter, and then it starts to glow gently. You put this cap on over the top, put it in its insulated bag, and that'll be hot for between five to ten hours depending on how much fuel you put in and the environment brilliant little device it gives off a few fumes but really great as a winter analog style warmer this is toasty hot so i'll put that in between my legs i've seen some of my friends use a uco mini candle lantern when they're sat on a chair just placed between their legs on the floor but this is a uh, perhaps a safer alternative. So let's see what we can get the temperature up to. That's eight degrees now, that's reading 7.7. .7. Now, just with a little breathing hole, that's gone straight up to 15 degrees, but yeah, it's really super toasty in here. And if I want to do tasks, I've got separate arms here. So these are the, made out the same material, which is mylar lined. I'll simply put those over my existing sleeves, zip open the pockets there, put that one on, unzip that, and then I can work still with my arms dry. Now, some of the models have zips to actually attach these inside but the original one just does that but you know that's absolutely fine because that flaps covering that armhole there and I can sit down there even have my bag protected if I want to I can just pop that over the top of everything and I'm really cozy there right let's see if I can get the dog to go in first Funny. And now I'm stopped for a prolonged period. I've got one for the dog as well. Now she'd probably rather stay guard and uh, look around. But for a wish I can snuggle her up in there. And that's a fantastic dedicated dog piece of kit. It's got an insulated mat in the bottom. It'll toggle up. And I've also got an insulated bag that's specifically fitted for this as well. So we're both protected and dry now. She can have a head out there, or she could lie down if she wanted to. Good girl. And she's got the same mylar protection. She's really damp, but I'm not worried because the lining's waterproof and I can dry her off before I put it, or I can dry off the inside of the bag with a towel when I've taken her out. Oops. I'm just training her to get used to this at the moment. Lots of treats when she goes in it. And then when I get into a situation like on the camp where it was a blizzard recently and we stopped and I'm setting up camp, I could put the dog in there and I know she's gonna remain warm and dry. Now with both of us protected and dry, we can do my camp tasks, make a drink, have a fire, have a coffee. The dog Jervan bag, simply folds away by zipping it in here and all of them incidentally are top quality YKK zips pull that along and then you simply roll it up and there's a, a tab at each end and I've attached a carabiner to that so either I can clip it to my rucksack or put a peg on it to stop it from blowing away. Oops. And then there's just a couple of inbuilt bungees there. And this is called the Jervy Height Medium. There's a large version as well for bigger dogs. Now this is available in the UK from Wild and Moor and there's an exclusive discount code for you below. So this discount code might be limited time, so check that 
and uh, make sure you buy from Wild and Moor. Now, very kindly, they gifted this to me. They're not an inexpensive thing. They cost £159, but the utilisation of it is absolutely amazing. If I lost this one, uh, or if it's stolen, whatever, I'd buy another one tomorrow. Absolutely no question about it. And in the winter, I'm going to be buying one of the other larger thermal line versions. So check those out as well. If you feel this one isn't for you, then there's larger 203 by 203 meter with a thermal lining that's different grades. And there's other ones that are big with an optional lining called the German Exclusive. But I think the German Thermo Hunter is the one I'm going to go for next winter. This is the original German original. Really, really interesting piece of kit. Then when you've arrived at your summit location, the actual German in its bag makes a nice little seat. Just to keep you off the mossy ground. Hello you. And if you wish, you can, if you want a bigger ground cloth, pull out the whole thing. Makes a nice little picnic blanket. Ah. Good. But when it gets cold and the cloud starts to come in, and one of your parties getting a bit chilled, you can quickly bundle them up. And then if you want to, you can go onto two-man mode. So is there plenty of space in there for two people? Yeah. <laughs> Quite cosy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lovely summit, this. One of the northwest Wainwrights. down by this little waterfall here in the Lake District, which is the rock and which is the person. <laughs> so we can see here why this is called the mountain cover. The lichen on the rock here blends perfectly with the rock of the dog. Good hardware and material. But it also blends well into a kind of forest environment and hillside environment as well. And if it's time to maintain a lower profile, I can fit my bag in there. Then I've got a fantastic observation post. There's no doubt about it in this bright sunshine. The reflective material does have a little bit of pop to it, but in the shade or in uh, duller environments it's uh, less visible but I'm sure you'll agree that this blends in considerably better than a, a bright orange jacket <laughs> so increasingly in the UK we want to be low profile so imagine that you've set up camp and you want to be sat outside just enjoying the evening or cooking keeping warm but being low profile so like on this Lake District hillside you can just sit on the mountainside, still and relaxed, and it's highly likely you won't be observed. And you'll be comfortable and warm. And the space in this to fit a chair inside and your backpack, and of course, a, a UCO mini candle, or the Whitby warmer. Here I am. Now, despite this being the mountain pattern, I would suggest that this is pretty good in forests as well. There is a woodland pattern, but I just love this one. So when you're sat, even on wet sphagnum moss, the completely waterproof material 
doesn't soak through. Now that's unlike a traditional mountain bivy style shelter, which aren't waterproof, they're just heavily windproof. Now what I've got for the dog is the German dog lair. It's a specialised bit of military equipment, but this is the dog version. So I'll get a sheltered in here. Silver line inside. Okay, I can snuggle her up in there. Right. There you go. Hi now. There we go. How's that? So no she's secure. I can get the tent up. You stay there, good dog. Hope you can hear me all right over this wind. Ooh. So what I've got here is the insulated part for the dog Felduken. It's a primal off 60 gram per square meter insulation. That's in its own waterproof bag. And it's like a simple square sack that fits in the dog bag and ties on with these drawstrings. So I'm getting her, get her out of that bag now and get her snuggled up in here. So I hope you can see that. That bag fits in there now. And that's the German dog bag, completely lined. Okay, so she's had some food and now she's inside the liner, inside a bag there. Fantastic. How was that? Now, the other use for the Felduken is, should I have a total tent failure, which I kind of hope doesn't happen tonight, I'll have a warm biggie bag to survive in. I can just zip that up and wrap myself up inside with my layers on and I'll be fine. The dog will be fine too. Good to know I've got the Felduken with me. So when I'm evacuating out of here now, I'll keep this handy and if I need to shelter, I can just get in this. And I've also got one for the dog as well. So I've just rigged up a simple line there and a couple of prussics. And I've just spotted a massive bramble there. That can go. So I've made a nice lean-to tart there, just a couple of prussics, one piece of cord going along, two pegs at the bottom. I could make this a bit more sophisticated by some carabiners and I could even attach uh, an extra loop on there. But now I've got a two meter long shelter that's camouflaged on one side and of course this mylar is going to be heat reflective. So if I had a small fire here, that would reflect a lot of heat back to me. That's how that looks from six meters away. When I've dropped the ridge line there to around knee height, I've got a really low, but very cozy bivy shelter there. Sorry about all the foliage, but I could easily sleep in there. There'd be plenty of room for me and the dog and my backpack in there. No problem. And of course, should I wish to attach a guy line to the corner, I can make the shelter a little bit higher and a bit more comfortable. It's definitely going to be completely waterproof. And of course, for an alternative signaling inside here is the included orange flag so you could be snuggied down inside and you can use that and that strip in the middle is uh, highly highly reflective for torchlight etc 
So you could tie that round your neck or to your body or to your rucksack and have a signal. If you did want to be found, the silver alu coating is highly reflective and you could signal with that for a long distance. And that's only at half the size at the moment. So I'm sure you'd agree that's extremely visible. This is only my first couple of weeks of using the Falducan and I've already found it absolutely indispensable. Now, what are the pros and cons with the Falducan? I think you've seen a lot of the pros that I've illustrated in this video. Now, two cons I can think of. There's one, the price. They're not an inexpensive thing at all, but they're actually guaranteed for 10 years. So there's faith in the product. And the other thing, this particular model, being mylar coated and PU coated inside isn't breathable at all. Now that's partly by intention because if you're a hunter and you want to maintain as low presence as possible that's going to trap your smells inside and of course a completely waterproof PU coated is completely windproof as well but that will inevitably cause condensation so you'll definitely need to manage that con condensation with uh, your layering system and breath ventilation inside. Other than that, fantastic piece of kit and really, really versatile. So I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the Jervan bag. Don't forget, there's discount codes to take you to Wild and Moor here in the UK. Uh, they have generously offered a discount on this and I would strongly recommend you think about getting one. As I said, I'm never going to be without one now. It'll really come into its own when the weather's inclement and you really want to get warm quickly, but I'm sure you've seen many other potential applications. And put in the comments below what your previous experience with this type of device might have been before and whether you are thinking of it might be useful for you for hiking and backpacking. Highly recommended. Thanks for watching.